In this video, we're going to take a closer look at how a learning module is organized by examining the module's study skills. We will discuss subtopics and activities in a Canvas module, as well as the relationship between online work in Canvas and the face-to-face -face work that students do in the classroom. Now, let's begin with look, taking a closer look at how a content learning module is organized. We're going to begin with going to our list of modules by clicking on the Start Here button, or alternatively, clicking on the modules in the list of navigation links. All right, here we go. Click on modules, and we have a list that opens. You have to be patient, sometimes it takes a minute to load. Here we go. And in my course, my study skills module was already open, but I'm going to contract it for a second. So you can see where it is in the list of modules. Here we had instructor resources on the top, technology skills pre-assessment, introduction to idea, and finally study skills. So I'm going to go ahead and close, open that again by clicking. There it has expanded. All right, so we are now in the study skills module and we can see um, a number of headers here as we look at this module. First, we have a link at the top that is for the study, study skills Google Drive folder. Um, and that would take you to a link that has all the instructional resources uh, for teachers. Uh, so let's look at the headers here. We have instruction, introduction, successful students, reading strategies, Note taking and time management, test taking and graphic organizers, more graphic organizers, and extra practice study skills. In most modules, there are five subtopics, and those correspond to the five days of the week. So there would be a subtopic for each instructional day if you meet on a five day schedule. Right. Um, and when we count those five, obviously we are not counting the introduction as a subtopic. Within each subtopic, there are a maximum of five activities. So let's take a look um, at successful students, which is a little bit of an anomaly because uh, the successful students actually has six, but usually there's only five. So you can see here, um, when there is a sixth activity, let's see, one is to learn, two is discuss, three is the read and listen, four is the do your study habits, five is a read and watch, and six is to do my study habits. You can see that this sixth item is marked for do in class. So what this means is that if you had, um, students meeting on a five-day schedule, the students would complete one whole subtopic of a learn, a discuss, a read and listen and watch, do your study habits, read and watch, and this optional one, which is done, in the sixth one, which is done in class. And they would complete this whole subtopic before they came to class the next day. So for example, on Sunday night, if, you, if your class met Monday to Friday, on Sunday night, a student might complete the whole section of successful students. And then they would come to class and do the in-class activities with you um, on Monday. Then Monday night, the students would complete this whole section on reading strategies before coming to class and meeting again with you um, for Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Then. After class on Tuesday, the students would complete this whole section on note-taking and time management before coming to class um, to discuss note-taking and time management in class with you on Wednesday. Continuing on Wednesday evening or any time before class on, there on class on Thursday, the students would complete this whole section of test-taking strategies and graphic organizers and then come to class and do in-class activities on test-taking strategies and graphic organizers. 
again, the students would do comma class again um, and do the more graphic organizers as the final portion of their week. And if students finished early, they could work on extra practice study skills, or even if they just needed any reinforcement for the particular content. So as far as instructional design, um, each of these subtopics takes about two hours for a student to complete. That's an average, um, depending on the student, depending on our technology skills. Um, and really what is important from the instructional point is that the student tries it. Um, they can always come back at any point during their course and complete an activity again, either for a better score or just complete it if it didn't, they didn't understand it um, or had difficulty with it completing difficulty with it the first time. And it is important to understand that when we talk about the activities that are done in class, um, which we'll be looking at in greater depth a little later on, these are different from the activities the students do in Canvas. These activities um, in Canvas are their pre-work. So this is the work they do online here, and this is their preparatory work for class. There is a whole other set of activities that the students do when they come to class to work with you as the instructor. This is the end of our video tour. Now return to your IDEA 101 course to practice what you've learned.